so moving on to video number two now where I'm going to be talking to you again about some more of my favourite childhood reads that had a really big impact on me growing up. Um, the first one I want to talk to you about is Goliath the Rich and the Wardrobe um, by um, C.S. Lewis. Now I remember receiving a Lionel Rich in a wardrobe as a Christmas gift and it was sometime mid-childhood, I don't know exactly how old I was but I was younger than 10, it was sometime mid-childhood. Um, this book was published in 1950 and it is the first of seven novels in the Chronicles of Narnia series. I did really really enjoy these books, particularly the Lionel Rich in a wardrobe. It took me a little while, I really enjoyed the Lionel Rich in a wardrobe and I think I again read the second and the third one, I'm not actually sure if I actually finished the whole series. I think I only read the first couple of books in the series. But it was Goliath and Witching the Wardrobe that was my favourite one and I have read that again as an adult. I think I read it in my early 20s again actually and I still really liked it and I also saw the adaptation as well and I just really like it. It's a really good book. Um, I think the other books after Goliath and Witching the Wardrobe seem to get a little bit more complex um, and I kind of found them a bit difficult comprehend but yeah so Narnia is a fantasy land of talking animals and mythical creatures that is ruled by an evil white witch. Four English children move to a large old country house because of evacuation during the war. Lucy the youngest visits Narnia via a magic wardrobe but on her third visit her three siblings accompany her. There is a lion called Aslan who gives his life to save one of the children and he later rises from the dead, defeats the White Witch and crowns the children kings and queens of Narnia. In Narnia, the White Witch keeps Narnia frozen in an everlasting winter and requires that any human found in Narnia be sent to her. My favourite scene is when the witch tempts one of the children, Edmund, with Turkish delight, which I now always associate with the book. I've always associated Turkish delight with Lionel Witch and Wardrobe. So it's funny how books have such an impact on you, like just one scene and then forevermore, um, you know, you just associate it with the book. And for me, Turkish Delight is always associated with The Lion of Witching Wardrobe. The children are later told about a prophecy that the witch's tyranny will end when two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve sit on the four thrones and that Narnia's true ruler, the Lion Aslan, is returning from a long absence. I will not tell you what happens, but it is a great read and um, one that can be enjoyed in adulthood too. Now, in a previous video, I did mention that I was not that keen on fantasy books, but for some reason, I did love the Narnia series. And obviously, the Narnia series is fantasy. I mean, it's quite deep fantasy, really. But I did enjoy them. So, clearly, I do enjoy some fantasy. So, that isn't completely correct, what I said. Um, I do... Certainly, growing up, I had a predilection for... Um, predilection... Yeah, predilection. That's alright, isn't it? A predilection for um, facts, and I did generally speaking. Um, predilection? Is it predilection or predilection? I need a dictionary. Anyway, um, it's a good word. But yeah, I, I basically, I, what I'm saying is, I loved facts uh, growing up, um, more, probably more than fiction. But that being said, there were some books, some fictional, some fiction that I did really enjoy. Um, so it wasn't the case, you know, I was completely, I was averse to fiction because I did enjoy it. So I've been mentioning, talking about, I did, there were quite a number of um, fiction that I did enjoy. But I think part of the issue was that growing up I did have problems with comprehension. I did often struggle to understand the sort of thoughts and feelings of characters in books. And that kind of like impacted on my ability to always comprehend complex fiction. But, um, and I think that's part of the reason that, why well, as my comprehension has developed, and obviously my comprehension is a lot more better now than it was as a kid, because you do develop, I'd say my comprehension for reading, at least, is a lot better now. I still don't comprehend people in real life scenarios, that is still just as bad as it's always been, but uh, my ability to comprehend fiction when it's written in books and I've got that time to process it, is a lot better than it was when I was a kid. So I think, um... As an adult, um, some of these books that I struggled to understand more as a kid, as, as I've read them again as an adult, I do understand them more, and I get more out of them. But um, I did enjoy, as a kid, I did enjoy, although I don't think I really understood or I really got the kind of symbolic aspects that I can now appreciate as an adult, because um, it is obviously quite a religious text. Basically, it's kind of um, sort of a, a religious allegory, really, um, heavily based on, like, Jesus Christ and the resurrection and things like that. Um, which I can understand now as an adult, um, which I didn't understand as a kid, uh, but I still did enjoy that book as, a, as, as I was growing up, and I think it's a really great read. Um, yeah, and 
there was a real life element in it as well, because obviously the children themselves weren't uh, magical. They were real, real children. Um, it's kind of like magical realism, really. You know, you did have the element of reality there. It wasn't like Harry Potter where everything is fantasy. Um, but yeah, as I say, when I read it again as a teenager as an ad and as an adult, I could appreciate the allegorical and the religious symbolism in a way that eluded me as a child. Um, and I, I would actually like to read them again, actually, because they are really good books. So I now have to briefly mention the Horrible History sticker book series. Um, now, uh, my mum got me these books as a way of helping me learn about history in a fun way. Um, so every Sunday, I sit with her in bed and um, go through these books as a child. Um, books in this series include The Rotten Romans, and there was one on the Ancient Greeks, and other historical lyrics as well. I can't quite remember all of them, but there's definitely one on the Ancient Greeks. Um, and each activity book was full of disgusting facts and pictures. Everything smelly and horrible was covered, which is what made them so appealing to me as a child. I love those sticker books. They really got me into history. I've always been quite fascinated by history. I've always loved museums. Oh God, as a kid, I spent absolutely ages going through museums. I've taken every single detail. I might talk about it in another video. But um, I've always enjoyed history. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, I just kind of brought it to life to me, really. And, um, and I also had a horrible history reading book too, and it was about the Victorians. And I remember reading about um, the use of a cane in schools and the horrible food that was served. That was very interesting to me as a child. The sort of, sort of age of eight, nine, that sort of age. Okay, so um, I'm going to finish now, but um, I hope to discuss more influential childhood reads very soon. So thank you for watching.